Hi and welcome to another episode of Rob's Triathlon Tips for Beginners. This is a nutritional video and topic, so I'm going to start with a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a registered dietitian or nutritionist. I'm just talking about my experience experimenting with changing my diet. And so this goes back to me getting a continuous glucose monitor. I got one of those because I was feeling more and more sensitive to certain foods. I'm in my early 40s now, and so I would eat something and I would fall asleep. Or I would eat something and get super short-tempered and grumpy with my kids. And just wonder, like, what? I'm a go-with-the-flow kind of person. What the heck is wrong with me? Why am I this monster? Uh, and so I got a CGM, a little sensor in the back of my arm, for about 28 days. And confirmed my suspicion that uh, I'm become over time very sensitive to sugar and grains and starches and you might think well what about things like oatmeal and sweet potatoes and yams that are supposed to be healthy for people who are maybe type 2 diabetic well those were just as bad for me as what I found out as well so I've cut those things from my diet so uh, what does a day look like for me now? Well, I'm what I would call on the high end of the low carb spectrum. So I eat 150 grams of carbs as a target, roughly. I don't beat myself up if I'm 170 one day. <laughs> on the other end, the super restrictive end of the spectrum, you've got keto which is just like way too restrictive for me. I think I would drive everyone around me nuts and I'd be spending a bunch of money on custom things, uh, special foods and snacks and stuff. And I'm just not interested in being that hardcore. That's something like 25 grams of, of carbs in a day or 50 grams of net carbs. You know, if you take your carbs and subtract the fiber, I believe that's what net carbs mean. I'm not worrying about net carbs, I'm just looking at carbs total. Carbs total, 150 grams is my target. So, um, I use an app called MyFitnessPal to track my, my food, my caloric intake. It tells you your macros too. So you can go into the app and you can see a, a pie chart of like a circle of how many grams of fat versus carb versus protein and what percentage of your daily intake has been from those three things and so if you were keto it might look like 75 percent fat and 10 percent carb and the and the rest uh, protein in a day my typical day is 50 percent fat uh, 25% carb, 25% protein. And maybe I'll increase the amount of protein I eat in a day over time. But uh, for now, I feel great eating the way that I do. So I'll use that app throughout the day to track all my intake, including my water intake. And it's very easy because if you're using a product that has a barcode, you can just scan it and it'll pull up the caloric information on that item and you can you can build sort of favorites and you can you can just easily copy your breakfast if you're eating the same thing every day you can copy that from the day before so it's a pretty easy app to use and free unless you want the premium features you can track your body weight in there too so what does my daily food intake look like it's uh breakfast i have greek yogurt which is high in fat and protein i'll mix some ground up flax seed in that and i'll put berries blackberries raspberries blueberries and strawberries because the berries are low in sugar and part of the keto diet and i know that i'm sensitive ish to other fruits like they'll spike me, it'll be a short spike. So my body can get it under control, but I still don't like that I spike up into the 140s when I have pineapple, for example. 
Uh, and then I'll have a piece of keto bread, which tastes really good in the toasted. You can freeze it. It's called the uh, Carbonat. It's about six grams of carbs. So it lasts a long time in the freezer. And then I'll put uh, Adam's peanut butter on that. That's low in sugar. And I'll be pretty full from that. And then for lunch, I'll have a whole bunch of vegetables with um, some fatty cheese or avocado. We love avocados in our household. So there's always some of those lying around. And I'll have some leftover protein from dinner the night before. And dinner is like protein and a bunch of vegetables. And snacks in between meals would be uh, different kinds of nuts, macadamia nuts, pistachios, almonds, walnuts, pecans, and beef jerky, and sometimes some dark chocolate, because that's a, also something that's part of keto, because it's low in sugar. So you get to eat dark chocolate. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, whereas if I have milk chocolate, that's not good. Um, and then I'll look at my, my pie chart my macros for the day after dinner and just sort of see yeah i got lots of lots of room for dessert but i'll still make some a smart choice i'll i'll have i'll have some berries mashed up into uh, vanilla ice cream or i'll have my new favorite kind of ice cream is uh it's like i don't know if i'm pronouncing it properly it's malai masti it's a uh, i think it's east indian style lactose free it's cardamom with almonds and pistachios it's delicious and that's also low carb per serving or i'll have a skier icelandic yogurt bar again not much sugar and carbs so it's not so restricted that i can't have dessert i absolutely can um and what's interesting about eating this way is that you naturally eat less calories than you did before because just just taking a look at the snacking by itself if if you were eating a normal diet lots of carbs like four or five hundred grams of carbs in a day you're probably snacking on things like a granola bar or a muffin and you're eating way more calories because of that all that stuff is hyper dense in calories it's full of carbs, it's full of sugar, it's full of fat, bad fats. <laughs> so if you cut that stuff out and you eat a different way, you can feel you can feel full and eat less calories. It's bizarre, but I have the data to show it. Um, so that's been great. It's like a benefit is like I'm not exercising more than I was before I don't feel like I'm starving myself and I've naturally lost 10 pounds so my body weight now is a new baseline of 165 pounds instead of 175 and I can see my abs again <laughs> another great thing about the switch for me has been that my energy is way more stable I don't get exhausted during the day my blood sugar is going between about 80 to 120. It's this little wave. Whereas before it was riding this roller coaster of blood sugar and needing stimulants all day long. And so I guess you could take two approaches to, to, to trying to get off stimulants like caffeine. You could say, I'm going to eat low carb or I'm going to eat, I'm going to cut that the stimulants out of my diet and I'm just gonna eat lots of carbs so I'll just constantly have a high blood sugar <laughs> I guess you can do that um, yeah so one of the people that I like to watch because he's a character I don't necessarily agree with everything he says is as a youtuber called durian rider uh, he's a cyclist and he one of the things he talks about is like cut caffeine out of your your diet because it's a drug and it's a stimulant it's a drug and you should get rid of it from your life 
and you'll be better off for it. So I, I took that advice from him. And I thought, okay, uh, a few weeks ago on a day where I had a stomach bug, I thought maybe this is a great opportunity for me to just piggyback off of this where I can't eat anything. I just barfing all day long and I already have a headache. Maybe I'm going to piggyback off this and, and drop caffeine from my diet. And so I did. And because I was already low carb, it was just a seamless thing. It was like nothing. I was already, I already had this stable energy level throughout the day. I didn't need caffeine at all. I didn't have to wean myself off of it. So that was a really cool, unexpected benefit of making this dietary change. Uh, when I exercise, I now consume a different type of product. I'm not training high carb and living low. I'm training low as well. I'm training with something called S Fuels. Uh, they make a variety of different products. And one thing they make is called S Fuel to Train. And it's for workouts less than three hours. You take one scoop of it in some water per hour. And that's been great for long bike rides. I felt fine. Uh, a little bit tougher for runs. Still getting used to sort of flipping the switch from burning glycogen energy and in, in your muscles from carbs to accessing your fat stores for energy. So it's a little trickier on the run from my experience. I, I kind of hit a, a wall about 45 minutes in or something. And if I can push through that, then I'm okay. As I get into longer workouts over three hours, then they have a different product called S Fuels Race, which has more carbs in it, but it's still formulated so that you are still using your fat for energy at the same time. So I'll make a follow up video on using S Fuels when I get into longer workouts as I get closer to Ironman Lake Placid in the summer. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not sponsored by S Fuels. I will gladly be sponsored by them if they want to sponsor me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm living. The, what they say is uh, live low carb, train low carb, race higher. <laughs> not necessarily high and you'll have a great day during your ultra endurance event and and have like way less gastrointestinal issues than the other athletes who are just shoving carbs down there down into their stomach the whole day and uh keeling over feeling gross um yeah so i guess back to to Durian Ryder is a good example of how there there are people on across the whole spectrum of diets who claim that they have the one answer. Like everybody needs to eat this way. Like everybody should be vegan. Everybody should be keto. Everyone should be eating Mediterranean diet or the latest weird thing, which is carnivore. Everybody should be carnivore. And Anybody who it, like talks in extremes like that, it, that's that's a bit ridiculous. Like we're all different. You have different genetic background than I do, and so I can't tell you that you should eat low carb. You need to find out for yourself what's right for you. Anybody who like it's kind of a Star Wars joke. Only the Sith talk in, a, in absolutes. <laughs> so. Durian Ryder says everybody should eat very low fat, high carb. And that clearly works for him. Like he looks fantastic. He's full of vitality uh, and he does long bike rides and he's ripped and, you know, and that's, that's great for him. But I know from wearing a CGM, that is a disaster for me if I were to eat that way. Um, so... Like, and you got to discover what's right for you. And when you talk about diet, really, as a triathlete, you got to, you got to consider 
at least four things I would say like does what you're eating support your training does what you're eating help your recovery does what you're eating help you with your body weight goal whatever that is and the most important is what is it doing to your health so if you're gonna make a dietary change you want to do so in consultation with your family doctor you want to get some blood and urine analysis done before you head down the path that you're going to head down to find out what your baseline is and you're going to want to check in uh, maybe every six months or at least once a year to see what's going on with your body since the switch because if you are losing weight and your training is great and your recovery is great but you're wrecking your thyroid and your your uh, blood pressure is a mess and your cholesterol is all screwed up and you and your other hormones are messed up and your kidneys and your liver are stressed like that's not the right diet for you <laughs> the only way you're going to discover that is in consultation uh, with your doctor and getting testing done regularly so yeah that's my what I my suggestion is uh, learn your own body learn what's right for it working with the doctor and then live that way and live well uh, don't listen to people who, who claim they have the 100% the answer for everybody on the planet um, Another great point on that that topic is there's a YouTube channel called um, Low Carb Down Under. So Australian doctors when they have some other guest speakers and there was one video where a doctor was talking about at one point how there's a certain percentage of people on the planet who are, are literally genetically predisposed to be carb burning machines. I mean something like 10 to 15 percent of of people. They can eat carbs all day, every day, and they'll be lean and mean, and they'll be healthy and feel great, you know. And I suspect Duran Ryder is one of these people. Uh, but other people, if they eat that way, it's a train wreck. And then there's other people who are somewhere in between that. It's great view, and it's a train wreck. Maybe they're here. Maybe they're here. Depends on how active you are. Depends on your genetics. Depends on how old you are. So that was a a great video for me to watch. I like to watch things on both sides of a, of a topic like diet or politics uh, and then make up my mind <laughs> what I think makes sense depending on the different topics. So I mean I think I've rambled on long enough <laughs> uh, and I hope you found this video to be entertaining and useful and if you did please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and share this video with with people who may benefit from it thanks